friends of PPS Northern Luzon. First, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to share with you some info on care of skin. I have nothing to disclose as I'm not affiliated with any pharmaceutical company, nor with a dermatologist, nor a, a proprietor of a skin clinic. So let's start. So what are the objectives of this lecture? To know the differences of a newborn skin anatomy compared to that of an adult. To know the significance of these differences. To examine the newborn skin meticulously. To use the neonatal skin condition score as aid in diagnosis of newborn skin problems to know common skin care practices and use them accordingly, to identify benign skin conditions in the neonate, and to be able to manage common neonatal skin disorders. Just a review of the layers of the human skin. First, we have the epidermis composed of the stratum corneum. In the adult, there are 10 to 20 layers. And the second layer is the dermis, which contains your um, collagen, collagen, elastin, blood vessels, and sweat glands. And the third layer is your hypodermis. Skin of the newborn is very different. It's less hairy less sweat and sebaceous gland secretions with decreased collagen and elastic fibers in the dermis thinner dermis with fewer intercellular attachments fewer melanosomes so what are the significance of these differences there is increased transepidermal water loss increased permeability to topical agents increased tendency for the skin to blister and the skin is less elastic less equipped to tolerate thermal stress or excess sunlight it's more likely to develop erosions in response to heat chemical irritants mechanical trauma and inflammation again a review of the functions of the skin it is a protective barrier that assists in the prevention of infection for thermal regulation, for tactile stimulation, conservation of proper hydration, and electrolyte balance. Let us examine the newborn skin. Usually, the newborn skin is light to dark pink, just like my slides. Plethoric, if there is polycythemia. Acrocyanotic, if the hands, the feet, and perioral area are bluish. Dark color of the tongue and mucous membranes means cyanosis from hypoxemia or what we call central cyanosis. If the skin is color yellow, think of jaundice. If it is green, means prolonged exposure to meconium. And if there is abnormal pigmentation, think of on genital nevi, macular vascular stains and hemangiomas there is a scorecard or what we call the neonatal skin condition score there are three parameters first is dryness one score is normal no sign of dry skin score two dry skin visible scaling and score three very dry skin cracking fissures Erythema is another parameter. One point, no evidence of erythema. Two, visible erythema more than less than 50% of the body surface. Three, visible erythema more than 50% of the body surface. Breakdown is another parameter. One, if there is none evident or none at all. Two, small localized areas of breakdown and three extensive breakdown how do we interpret the results a perfect score is three 
nothing wrong with the skin. And a worse score is 9. The medical team must be notified. If a neonate scores a single score of 3 in one area, or a combined score of six and above. A dermatology referral may also be appropriate. Let's look at the management of skin care practices. First, nappy care. Nappy changes should occur at regular intervals to avoid irritation to the perineal skin environment. Evaluation of the perineal area is required at its nappy chains to ensure early identification of perineal dermatitis and candida infections. Sometimes you change nappies uh, five to ten times a day, depending on um, the number of urination and also number of stools. Disposable nappies are preferred. Cotton balls or soft disposable towels with warm water are the preferred cleansing method. A pH neutral cleanser may be used if stools are dry and difficult to remove. Wipes should be avoided. If required, they should be free from alcohol and fragrance. Barrier creams should be used on all neonates at risk of perineal dermatitis at every nappy change at the first sign of erythema or skin breakdown. The removal of barrier creams between nappy changes is not necessary. Rather, apply another layer. Zinc oxide is very common. Um, if it contains plant extracts and or fragrance, it should be avoided. Eye and oral care. Routine assessment of the eyes and mouth should be done minimum of four hourly. Assess for exudate, skin condition, and moisture level. For eye care. Assessment should be utilized to identify abnormalities. If exudate appears, I should be wiped from the inner corner outwards with a single-use cotton ball soaked in 0.9% sodium chloride. Exudate from the eyes can be a common occurrence in the neonate. However, an increase in exudate, purulent in color, may signify an infection. The neonate with reduced functioning of the eyelids, like preterm neonate, sedated, muscle relapse, will require routine eye care to maintain lubrication. Mouth care. The term neonate with normal anatomy and physiology of the mouth does not require routine oral care. Routine assessment should be utilized to identify abnormalities. The neonate requiring regular oropharyngeal suction, intubation, or other supportive devices will require routine oral care to reduce injury to the lips and oral mucosa as follows. Minimum four hourly cleaning of the lips with sterile water, ensuring that to pull away any skin that may be lifting prematurely. Assessment of the tongue and oral mucosa's moisture levels may require a prescribed oral treatment. Assessment of the skin condition around the mouth in particular, pressure injuries caused by equipment. I'm sure that you have heard about this and is, you are now practicing it. Oral immune therapy with express breast milk is the provision of small amounts of EBM on a cotton bag, like 0.2 ml split between each cheek every two to four hours. It provides immunoprotection, particularly in the extremely preterm neonate, and empowers families in the care of the neonate. C. Bathing. The general bathing principle is implement safety principles on bathing neonates. Use standard precautions, including wearing gloves, until after the neonate's first bath. Ensure bath equipment is not a source of cross-contamination among neonates. Implement environmental controls to create a neutral thermal environment and to minimize heat loss. Your environment when bathing should be warm enough for the baby. The choice of bathing technique depends on the neonate's gestational age and clinical status. For the first bath, this applies to all neonates. Additional considerations for preterm neonates. 
provide the first but once the neonate has achieved cardiorespiratory and thermoregulatory stability. Delaying the first bath to at least 6 to 24 hours after birth is preferential. For neonates born to HIV positive mother, the first bath should occur as soon as possible after birth. Use warm tap water. Temperature should be 37 to 37.5 degrees centigrade and a pH neutral or slightly acidic cleanser if required to assist with removal of blood and amniotic fluid. Keep bath time short, approximately 5 minutes. Leave vernix intact as much as possible. Use appropriate rewarming measures after bathing, including skin-to-skin -skin contact. Number 2. Swaddled Immersion This is the recommended technique for neonates. The technique includes swaddling the neonate in a light swaddling cloth, like a cloth nappy, submerging the body to the level of the shoulders, gently exposing it sling one at a time. To wash, and if distress is shown at any point, pausing and providing containment holding and or nutritive sucking. Benefits include a reduction of behavioral and physiological stress, including temperature variation. And number three technique, sponge bathing, the least recommended technique as this method can result in hemodynamic compromise or heat loss and behavioral distress. If sponge bathing is required, ensure the neonate is kept contained where possible to reduce behavioral distress. A warm environment is utilized like a radiant warmer or isolate and physiological monitoring is continued. Just a review of the studies on skin care by uh, Peitavi et al. Conclusions. Bathing immersed in water seems generally superior to washing alone. Bathing or washing with synthetic detergents or, ma or mild liquid baby cleansers seem comparable with or even superior to water alone. Also, another study Bathing and cleansing in newborns from day one to first year of life, as recommended during a European Roundtable meeting by Peitavi, Cork et al. Conclusion Bathing is generally superior to washing provided basic safety procedures are followed and has psychological benefits for the infant and parents. When bathing infants with a liquid cleanser, a mild one not altering the normal pH on the skin surface, or causing irritation to skin or eye should be chosen. Another study, which involves about 3,062 papers, were reviewed and studied. Conclusions, daily use of full body emollient therapy may help to reduce the risk of atomic, atopic eczema in high-risk babies with a genetic predisposition to eczema. However, the use of olive oil or sunflower for baby dry skin may adversely affect skin barrier function. Qualitative research indicates that parents and health professionals believe that water alone is best. The evidence indicates no difference between the specific products tested and water alone, offering parents a choice on their baby's skincare program. Preterm infant considerations. Consider the weight, gestational age, severity of illness, and bathing preterm neonates. For neonates less than 32 weeks gestation, consider the use of warm water only, bathing during the first week of life due to skin irritation and rest with cleansers. Avoid rubbing. For neonates more than 32 weeks gestation, pH neutral or slightly acidic cleansers may be utilized. Neonates may be bathed every two to three days. Use warm sterile water when areas of skin breakdown are evident. If skin is dry, flaking, or cracked after the bath, an emollient may be applied to the skin. What are emollients? These are substances and use are the following. To prevent and treat skin breakdown and dryness, should not be used routinely in extremely premature infants 
because their use may increase the risk of systemic infection. They should not contain perfume, dye, or preservative. Single-use or patient-specific containers should be used to minimize risk of contamination. Apply an emollient top to toe daily at the first sign of dryness, fissures, or flaking. Maintain sterility by ordering patient-specific containers or decanting products onto paper towel prior to application. Emollient use is not associated with negative thermal effects or burns and may be used in conjunction with phototherapy or radiant heat. Emollients should contain well-tolerated preservatives and emollient use may interfere with the use of adhesives. Preterm na unit consideration. Some evidence states that prophylactic emollient use in preterm na units Weighing 750 grams or less is associated with an increased risk of infection. Remember, the smaller babies do not need prophylactic emollients. Letter E, disinfectants. Very little data is available on what disinfectants are best suited to the neonate skin, particularly the preterm neonate skin. It if a disinfectant is required in neonates less than 14 days of age and or less than 30 weeks gestation, gently cleanse the skin with sterile water after the procedure. Okay, preterm neonate consideration, chlorhexidine gluconate is preferred in the preterm infant. The sur surrounding area should be cleansed thoroughly with a moistened gauze square after use. A number of studies have shown chemical burns in preterm infants where povidone iodine and isopropyl alcohol were used. This should therefore be avoided. Umbilical cord care. Keep the cord area clean with water. Do not use alcohol wipes. Clean with water and a pH neutral cleanser if sold with urine or stool. Fold the nappy down below the umbilicus. No abdominal binders. Cord clamp may remain in situ until separation. Where possible, the umbilical stump should be kept or loosely covered with baby's clothing to avoid irritation and promote healing. Avoid exposing the periumbilical skin to chemicals in order to prevent periumbilical burns. Regular ass assessment is necessary to differentiate between normal umbilical cord healing and potential problems. Common newborn rashes. A. <laughs> eruptions. One is erythema toxicum. This is the most common postular eruption in the newborn. They begin as erythematous, 2 to 3, 3 mm macules and papules, then postules. It looks like flea beaten. It's Rubs its postule on the face, trunk, and proximal extremities except the palms and toes. Remember, except the palms and toes. Usually, they fade away in 5 to 7 days. Number 2, transient neonatal postular melanosis. This is a vesicopostular rust that blocks surrounding erythema. 2 to 5 mm diameter postules on a non erythematous base in all areas of the skin, including palms and soles. This time, all parts of the body, including palms and soles. Pigmented macules within the vesicle postules are unique. Three, acne neonatorum. These are closed comedons, a plug of sebaceous material causing white heads on the forehead, nose, and cheeks, usually at two to four weeks of life. They clear without treatment in four months without scarring. Four milia, one to two mm pearly white or yellow papules caused by retention of keratin or protein material present in the epidermis within the upper dermal layer. They occur mostly on the forehead, cheeks, nose, and chin. We have milia in the mouth or palate, and we call them the Epstein pearls. Usually, they resolve within one month. Number five is miliaria or heat rash. This is caused by warmth. A green sweat duct occlusion is the initial event. It's called heat rash. Okay. 
There are two types, miliaria crystallina, 1 to 2 mm, vesicles without surrounding erythema found in the head, neck, and trunk. Number two, miliaria rubra, deeper intraepidermal level of eccrine gland obstruction. Papules and vesicles form surrounded by a red halo or diffuse erythema. So what's the treatment for heat thrust? Keep the baby cool. Number six, we have seborrheic dermatitis or cradle cup. It's difficult to clinically distinguish from atopic dermatitis. This is self-limited. We will know the differences between seborrheic dermatitis and atopic dermatitis later. Transient vascular lesions, acrocyanosis, I think I mentioned that a while ago. This is due to exaggerated vasoconstriction due to cold stress. Central cyanosis, look at the tongue and mucous membranes, they're dark. Another is cutis marmorata, which is reticulated mottling of the skin in a symmetrical pattern over the trunk and extremities. How is the treatment? They resolve by warming. Conditions that persist more than six months, look for signs of hypothyroidism, trisomy 18, Down syndrome, Cornelia de Lange syndrome, or other causes of CNS, induced neurovascular dysfunction. Number four, Harlequin color change. This is a vascular flashing of the skin when infant is placed horizontally. It occurs suddenly, persists for 30 seconds to 20 minutes. It resolves with increased muscle activity, crying or returning the infant to supine position. It is as if the treatment is only positional. It occurs during the first week of life and recurs up to three to four weeks of age. It's caused by immaturity of the hypothalamic center that controls the dilatation of peripheral blood vessels. Let us look at the pathologic disorders of the neonatal scheme. I just presented the most common ones. Differences between seborrheic dermatitis and atopic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis occur usually the first month of life and atopic derm after three months. Affected parts for seborrheic dermatitis includes the scalp, that's why it's called cradle cup. In the atopic dermatitis, uh, affects the extremities. Pruritus is uncommon in the seborrheic dermatitis while well, it's ubiquitous or very severe in atopic derm. Relapse is common in uh, atopic derm, self-limited in uh, seborrheic dermatitis. Treatment, anti-allergy for atopic derm while well, seborrheic dermatitis you need to give tar containing shampoo, selenium sulfide, ketoconazole cream or shampoo three times a week, and hydrocortisone 1% cream. Staph infections. We have here empatigo. Empatigo uh, not only affects the lips but also the extremities and the whole trunk. Folliculitis, follicles, especially in uh, the roots of the hair. Cellulitis on the face, for example, abscesses, foruncles, and your stuff scalded skin syndrome. This you have to pay attention because this is very serious once the baby is attacked by this um, bacterial infection. Abrupt onset of generalized blanching erythema around the mouth. We have what we call the Nikolsky sign, separation of the upper epidermis and wrinkling of the skin as in this uh, photo. It affects the head, the neck, buttocks, groin, axilla, periumbilical area of the abdomen. And how do we treat? Admit the patient, give IV fluids, nafcilin IV if the patient can afford. If not, you can uh, use your cephalexin, your oxacillin and topical lubrication emollients. Another is diaper dermatitis. This is very common because nowadays we use diapers right and left. Intertrigoid dermatitis that occurs between folded surfaces of the skin-like areas that retain warmth and moisture. And you have diaper candidiasis, bright red eruption with numerous pinpoint satellite papules and pustules. 
How do we maintain dryness? Of course, after bath, you have to dry the um, groin and all the areas that need to be dried. You can apply topical antifungals like nistatin or clotrimazole two times a day for 10 days, hydrocortisone cream two times a day for three to four days. As much as possible, avoid high potency steroids. Treatment if you irritant contact dermatitis, gentle cleansing with moist non-medicated tissue, zinc oxide, very common a drug in the neonate, and petroleum jelly. My dear friends, take home message. A proper skincare regimen is required for neonates to maintain its structural integrity and functional competence. Regular bathing with mild liquid cleanser followed by application of an emollient is considered the standard skincare regimen for a neonate. My friends, I thank you and shall we say the skin is the mirror of a meticulous neonatal care.